Roll-up garage doors are great, but they can be a bit of a pain and sometimes a safety hazard. The addition of an electric motor makes life so much easier and they're actually really easy to install. On a previous video, we showed you how to install this door. If you want to see that video, follow the links in the description below. And today I'm going to show you how to motorize the door using the Centurion RDO2 roll-up door motor. The tools you'll need, two adjustable wrenches, a drill with a 5mm masonry bit and a 3mm steel bit, a Phillips screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver just to pop off the cover, 7 and 13mm spanner and a pencil. The garage door motor kit consists of two main parts, the drive unit and the control box. Now before you install them, just make sure you disconnect the two, it makes life a lot easier. Also included in the box is a weight bar, two four button remotes, and the nuts and bolts needed for installation. Now depending on the door you have, you may need to install an additional wheel. Just check with the guys at Builders, but as long as you're within 85 to 120 mils, you're good to go. Now these motors are pre-programmed to be installed on the right hand side of your garage door. But if you do need to install it on the left hand side, you can reprogram it by simply following the instructions in the user manual. Now I'm going to start by installing the motor. This is where an additional set of hands comes in handy. So loosen the U-bolts and unwind the spring. I need to release the tension on the springs with the two adjustable wrenches with the door in the closed position. Just be sure not to let it unwind uncontrollably. Once the spring is slack, we can remove the U-bolt on the side that we're installing. Now check that the motor is disengaged by turning the drive wheel. If it doesn't turn, then simply disengage the unit by pulling on the red manual release rope. Now I can lift the garage door slightly and slide the motor onto the axle until the drive shaft prongs fit into the drum wheel. Now use the supplied U-bolts to hold it in place. I can now reset the tension on the springs and tighten the U-bolts. Our motor is installed, now it's time to install the control unit. Now remember this is not a waterproof unit, so it does need to be installed inside your garage. Now use the template to mark and drill the three 5mm holes, insert the plastic plugs and the screws. Then hang the control box. If the box sits away from the wall slightly, simply turn the screws in a few more turns until the control box sits flush against the wall. Next up, we need to attach the weighted bar to the inside of the door at the bottom. Mark and drill your two 3mm holes, attaching the bar with the screws and nuts. The weighted bar is very important and helps the door to start sliding down the tracks when you close the garage door. Now before we connect up all the wires, we just need to set our opening and closing limit switches. Open the limit cover and loosen the three screws slightly until you're able to turn the cam by hand. Rotate the lower open limit cam in the direction of the switch until you hear a click. Then turn it a further 10 degrees. To check the limit switch has been set correctly, Lower the door slightly and then lift it up again. You should hear the click when the door is about 100 mils from the stops. Next is to close the door and set the closing limit. So the exact same thing, just using the upper cam. Check that the switch clicks about 100 mils before the door touches the floor. Remember, turning the appropriate cam toward the limit switch decreases the door travel and away from the appropriate limit switch increases the door travel. Now we can open the control box and connect the cable to the open function button on the box, as well as the charger cable into the main supply cable, and lastly the battery cable to the battery. Plug the motor into the mains power and we can now press the button on the control box to operate the door. Now if the door doesn't quite open enough or close properly, just adjust the cam slightly. Once you're happy that the limits are set, tighten the three screws and put the cover back on. From the door in the closed position, we need to cycle it through five full open and close cycles in order for the motor to learn where the limits are and the force required to open and close the door. This must be done by pressing the button on the control panel. The light will flash every two seconds. Once that's been done, we can program the remotes. Press the learn button once and that light will flash. Then press the button on the remote for three seconds and the light will flash three times confirming that it's learned. Now there's a lot of other functions like closing and opening speeds and even a holiday lockout mode. All of these can be programmed using the very comprehensive user manual. Now remember everything I've used here today is available at Builders, in store or online at builders.co.za. And for more how-tos just like this, visit the blog on the website. Get to Builders, get it done.